My pressure point today is comfy in this salmon right. If I don't get that right, then I've got big problems. But just a comfit salmon on its own is not enough. You need bites and crunch of other flavours. I get onto my remoulade. Into my blender goes three egg yolks, half a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. I start pouring in olive oil to this mayonnaise. It didn't work. I'm ditching it. <coughs> I have enough time to make a second batch. In the meantime, I take my crispy skin pans out the oven. I lift up the first pan from the second one and it's all shredded apart. I forgot to olive oil the base of the pan going on top. This is a disaster. short for time now. I can't fill it another salmon. I don't know what to do. Put up the perfect dish and you'll get the perfect score. 15 minutes to go. I'm on mayonnaise number two. I've got everyone up the gantry watching me. Bang, it's perfect. It worked. I have all my components ready, but I'm not impressed with that salmon skin. I don't want to risk getting less points today for not having exactly the same thing on three dishes. Oh, my God. I'm going to fight for it. Come on, here. Yeah. I feel it in, like, 30 seconds. So I want to get the perfect piece of skin each plate. And I just hope to God that it cooks in time. Oh, Allow yourself time to make it look perfect on the plate. You've got ten minutes to go. Come on! Come on, Lisa. Now it's time to get the steaks out of the water bath and let them rest before I finish them off in a pan with butter. I want to make sure they get a nice crust because Gary's really going to judge these steaks critically. My burnt cabbage is, is not going to work. Maybe I should just steam it. Yeah, it will be disappointing to steam the cabbage today. You know, it won't have that kind of smoky burntness, sweetness that I have from the oven. So what are you going to do with the cabbage and bacon now? Just steam it, toss it with bacon and... Should work in the steamer, but you're pushing it, yeah. aren't you? Yeah, Come I am. On. My chickens are still in the oven. And I really haven't allowed enough time for them to rest. With less than ten minutes to go, it's now or never. Around 60, 63 degrees is kind of when chicken is good and safe to eat. Sixty-three. Thank God. I've got to get food on the plate. Round one's nearly over. Season, check, season, check again. Five minutes to go. I get the salmon out of the sous vide machine. I slit the bag open and this beautifully soft, perfect salmon slides into my hand. Perfect. Going, guys. Come on. So I run out to the Master Chef garden. I want something green on that plate. Come on, Samira, let's go. Come on. Come on, guys. One minute to go. Eye on the prize. Eye on the prize. Do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? Come on. Time to check up on the salmon skin. I need this skin to be perfect. And bang, it's done. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Get it on the plate, guys. Ten seconds to go. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Time 
thumbs up and I'm absolutely buggered. Hello. I put my everything in this dish. I so hope I nailed perfection. I'm really happy with the way I cooked. You know, I cooked from the heart, I cooked my mum's dish. I'm a little bit disappointed though with my plating. Um, I really wanted them to be very beautiful. Samira, we'll taste your dish first. Okay. Walking towards the judges, I'm nervous like you would not believe. Oh my God, my heart is thumping. Thanks. Look at the consistency across yeah. the plates. It's spectacular. It's Thank just you. hope. It tastes spectacular. Oh, I hope. <laughs> that there is spectacular, beautiful, amazing cooking. Salmon cooked perfectly. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I love it too. Crispy skin sets it off brilliantly. And the only thing I'll question is whether or not putting celeriac remoulade is needed on a dish where you've got lovely crunch and freshness from everything that is on that salmon. I think it's great cooking. I think it's the, um, the pinnacle of what you've done so far. Yeah. And now's the time to do it in the finale. Well done. Absolutely. Thank you. Good stuff. Samira, well done. Now it's time for us to score your dish and see how perfect you've gone. Thank you. Well done, Samira. Right, let's get the next dish in. Linton, your turn. Let's go, Lino. Right at home, Sheriff. It's really daunting as I'm walking to the judges. There's no doubt about it. I think you've done yourself proud in terms of presentation and also in terms of what we wanted, three identical plates. Thanks, guys. Yeah, chef. Well done. <laughs> You've never had a dish of the day. Today might be your day. You've given us sweetness in your onion jam. You've given us in the gravy some saltiness. And then these little pops of texture and flavour. The silkiest, smoothest puree, perfectly cooked beef. You start adding all these flavours to it and it just makes the beef explode. You are a completely different cook to when you came into this competition. Someone who was so green around the gills, I was actually questioning why you were here, to now putting up a dish and going, I know exactly why you're here. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Emma, your turn. Do you want to bring your dishes down? I'm just really hoping that the judges like my food, you know. I'm disappointed that it's not perfect, but it's pretty good.
for me, I think this is beautiful cooking. Roast chicken with truffles. It's kind of <laughs> heavenly. I don't really know many farm gate restaurants that I can <laughs> go and get food like this at. There's a lot going on here. This is almost a perfect reinvention of roast chicken. And they're very, very rare to find. Delicious. Well done. Thanks, Emma. Well done. Thanks. Thanks. to move on to is cooking the scampi. So I place some of the anchovy butter in a really hot pan, get that all melted and add the scampi. Scampi do not take long to cook at all, so I'm just going to keep basting the scampi in the anchovy butter just to get the maximum flavour out of it. Frank, you're going to put some of the shells in your sauce? Yeah. Scampi heads will add a rich crustacean flavour throughout the sauce. Nice bread. Great idea. That will tie the whole thing together to make it a seafood dish. I'm ready to plate, but I'm nervous about how much of what to put on the plate. Right. Your vision should now be coming together on the plate. You need to take the lead in this finale. You've got five minutes left. Five minutes left. Presentation, so I need to make sure mine's perfect. I need this dish to look absolutely beautiful, as well as balancing all the flavours together to make the dish perfect. Come on, Brent. Go, Brenty. Hello, Azul. Seeing their ability under pressure, seeing the standard of their food now, uh, it's it's incredible to watch. This is going to be really close. I can feel the walls bending under the concentration. One minute to go. Oh, well, Laura. Oh, looks wow. beautiful, Brent. That looks amazing. Brent looks amazing. 30 seconds left in round one. Come on, guys. I'm really happy with my dish. Um, you know, there's creaminess, there's sweetness, there's acidity. You know, I think the judges are going to like it. <sighs> I'm happy with the presentation of the dish. My only worry is there's not enough acid on there. That's my biggest concern. I'm worried I didn't put enough of the pickle on to balance that flavour. Remember, we're scoring this dish each out of 10, so there's a maximum of 30 points up for grabs. Laura, you're up first. This tasting compares to no other tasting we've done before. This is just huge. There's so much riding on this right now, and God, I'm praying that I love this dish. Oh, you can smell that. Good. It's grilled scampi with an anchovy butter, roasted garlic cream, scampi head oil, and pickled cabbage. It's nice. I love the fact that throughout this competition you've stayed super true to yourself. Super true to who you are, where you come from and what you do and where you're going to go. And if 
This is uh, the dish that one day is going to be on the menu of your Italian restaurant. I'll be there. I'll be there with all my mates, <laughs> deep into it with our fingers, eating it. Delicious. For me, flavours are all there. The scampi are sweet and delicious because it makes me want to do this. Very beautiful. Thank you. Very delicious. Thank you. What a beautiful, beautiful dish. And what I love about your food is you taste it and you get transported to, I don't know, a dock somewhere down in the south of Italy on a hot day, you know, icy cold carafe on the table. And food like that, food that you want to, you know, get your fingers dirty for. And you've cooked those scampi absolutely wonderfully. For me, because we've got a very creamy um, shellfish in terms of the scampi, what I'm looking for is a little bit more zing, which I think is there with those little tiles of pickled cabbage. But we probably just need a little bit more. Yep. Wow, Laura, great start to the finale. Mm. How do I score that one? Does anyone even want to dip their finger in that before he goes, or is that just me? No, it's me as well. <laughs> Delicious. Delicious. Well done. I feel confident after hearing the judges' comments. I'm really happy that they loved the first dish that I put up, so that's good, but I'm just hoping the judges give me some really good high scores. Brent. I'm feeling really anxious. This is my first chance to get points on the board in round one. I really want to get a head start because no one likes playing catch up. Textures of pearl barley with poached scampi, pickled red cabbage, and some fresh chervil. Oh, yeah. I love the sweetness. I love that red cabbage sauce. I think it's absolutely delicious. And what I love most about it is you infuse them with the shells of the crustacean and the yep. scampi. So for me, like old school cook, you know, I love that because it adds complexity and a little, a different flavour that you don't come across every day. And it underpins the whole dish for me. And that's what I love. Thank you. Brent, <clears throat> that scampi. Delicious. Thank you. It's amazing given the sheer number of different ingredients and how they can be pulled together. That is actually remarkably rare that we see something that's new and exciting and that isn't almost a cliche. And the idea of combining fennel seeds, red cabbage, and those scampi shells to make this licorice rich, sweet, intense sauce is perfect. When you see new things on a menu, they do one of two things. They either excite you, inspire you, or they terrify you. In this case, excited, inspired, and that dish looked unbelievably beautiful. Well done. Thank you. Especially with three plates, I wanted to give myself about 10 minutes to plate beautifully these entrees, but I don't have 10 minutes. Come on, Alina! The pressure is ridiculous, but... Come on, Alina! I have to get food on these plates if I want to have any chance of winning this competition. If there's one thing that the pressure and the nerves and the stress of, of this environment that we're in today does to us, it finds another gear. Go, Maddie, come on. You don't have any other option. You, you have to put all of that food on the plate. You have to get it done. No questions asked. Make it happen. Come on, Alina, Matt, come on. 
Dr. Dre. I've got lots of beautiful flavors on the bench. I just have to bring them together. Come on, Elena. My smoked vegetables, my marin, and my crisps have all turned out perfectly. I just hope I was able to get enough flavor into that dressing. Leave nothing behind. One minute to go. I've got to produce three beautiful, delicate-looking dishes, and I kick off with the, the puree on the base, some of the corn chorizo salsa, and I'm just sort of alternately placing the, the, the leg and the breast of the quail. Dress it with the, the coriander and the pineapple gremolata. Matty, that was beautiful. Matty, that's awesome. And I feel like it's just missing something. It needs some micro-herbs. 30 seconds! What is it? Today I've made marin two ways, with a smoked vegetable salad and a dashi dressing. Were you keeping the nerves under control? Um, it was way tougher than I had anticipated. Yeah. Um, I don't want to disappoint anyone. Okay. Are you happy with the dish? Um, I definitely would have liked a little bit more time to refine it a little bit further. Take my dashi dressing maybe five more minutes. Alina, we're going to taste. I was worried about this dish because I think it needs a bit more depth of flavour, the that. dashy. But what I love about it, the marintel is perfectly cooked. Delicious. It's tasty and yummy. On a day like today when it means so much to you, you know, you can retreat into doing something that you've probably done weeks ago. But what you've done is you've added another dish to your repertoire that is perfectly cooked marin and vegetables that are, have got some lovely textures through them as well as flavour. It's a beautiful, fresh dish that really makes a star of the marin. I really like the crisp and I, I like the fact that they've got a salty hit and the marin needs that. You haven't disappointed us. You haven't disappointed yourself. Thank you. Thanks, Elaine. <laughs> Let's get Matt's dish in. What have you cooked us? Pansy and quail with comfy legs, corn chorizo salsa, and a Pedro Jimenez glaze. It looks great. It's delicious. I love it. 
I love that sauce. It's absolutely delicious. It just, it's like boom, you know, full of flavor. It's sophisticated, you know, it's smooth, it's complex and delicious. And you add that together with all the other flavors that you got on that plate, I think it's absolutely delicious. The cooking of the confit legs is absolutely beautiful. I think this is an absolutely delicious plate of food. Well done. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. To plate up my starter, I layer the bottom of a bowl with that beautiful avocado cream, a nice mound of the crab mayonnaise salad, and top it with some lovely fresh salmon roe, finger lime, the cucumber on the side of the dish, and sprinkling of baby coriander. Mmm, gee whiz. You reckon that's enough? No, I'm concerned about texture. That crab took a lot longer than I thought it would, but I got everything on the plate. I've got to serve this starter now so I can finally get onto my main. This round is huge. I need to squeeze every point I can out of this competition. Service, please. I can't believe Ben has already stand out the starter, and I got so much of things to do. Sash, you're sitting on half an hour to go, okay? Yep. It looks beautiful, Sashi. Go, Sashi. Let's go, Sashi. This is one of the biggest stress I felt in the whole competition. Come on, Sashi. Get the dishes up. If I can't put up this starter as soon as possible, this whole challenge is going to be gone. I will not have enough time to finish my main. I will not be able to win the Master Chef. Come on, baby. Come on, Dad! It needs to be faster. Service, please. What have you cooked? I've cooked blue swimmer crab with an avocado cream, coriander, and finger lime. Beautiful. Good. Off you go, man. You better get stuck <laughs> in. I'm really stoked to be finished the starter, but I've got 30 minutes to get this main up, and I am really under pressure now. Come on, you need to push. Well, not what I was expecting, to be honest. A lot of creaminess yeah. and not a lot of crunchiness. I oh, know, but I think it's going to taste great. OK. Let's go for it. <laughs> what I love about Ben's dishes, those little uh, salmon pearls and the finger limes with the crab in that mayonnaise. The little pops are fantastic. The trouble I've got, it's just lacking some, some texture and chunks of crab meat. Yeah. It's just so creamy. Yeah. And so creamy, and it's a shame because that crab meat's picked beautifully. Nice. But I just need more acidity and I need crunchiness. Yeah. And I think because he chose to hero the crab meat, where his brain has gone, I don't know, because he's essentially smothered, you know, that lovely sweetness and freshness and, more importantly, the texture of each of those little kind of filaments yeah. of crab with all of that creamy stuff. Shame for Ben. We'll just have to see how he goes on the second course. Shall yep. we score? I'm running behind, but my prawns are looking great. Go, Sashi. Let's go, Sashi. To plate up my starter, I'm putting two pieces of prawn sambal with a handful of herb salad and two prawn head 
and garnishing it with a little bit of chili on top. It looks beautiful, Sashi. It smells amazing. Come on, Sashi. It's a simple dish, but it's going to be full of flavors. Service, please. Let's go, Sashi. Come on, Sashi. It smells good. Yeah. So, Sashi, don't want to hold you up. What's the dish? Sambal prawn with a crispy prawn head and some herb salad to go with it. Brilliant stuff. Come on, get back in the kitchen. Thank you. Main course. <laughs> Come on, Sashi. 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 Come on. My starters are out, but I'm feeling the stress. This is a mega round. 60 points is for grab. I only have 25 minutes left to serve my main. They are both doing fish. Mm. Wow! Look at that. It looks amazing and smells beautiful. Yeah. 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 I don't want to talk, I just want to eat. <laughs> yeah. Finger looking good, that is. That is just absolutely fantastic. I love the complexity of that sambo. And these crunchy heads, they're just the way he's peeled them. You see that little extra bit of flesh that's on the top of there? Mm. It's just gorgeous. Chili's the hero. Can you tell from the top of my head <laughs> if Chili's the hero? <laughs> that is just delicious. And for me, putting flavour aside, those prawns are cooked beautifully. He has nailed it. This is Sashi's cooking at its best, isn't it? You know, it's, it's all about flavour. It's all about that, that amazing balance of the freshness of the herbs against the, the heat of the chilli, both the cooked chilli and then that raw bird's eye on top. That's a smashing starter from Sashi. Wonderful cooking. Let's go, boys. 